Hey folks, welcome back to our backyard DIY pond build. We've been working on this hole in the ground for about a month or so now, and I've made seven or I think eight videos on this build series. And while there's been a lot of questions pop up in the comments, and in this video, I hope to address some of those questions. Like, how is that pond gonna hold water? How are you gonna keep the field chemical runoff from entering the pond? How are the rocks gonna stay on the bank? What's the bottom of the pier look like where they stripped off the forms? And probably the most common question is, how are you gonna keep the water clean and how are you gonna keep the pond full? Well, that's the dirty little secret that I haven't talked about yet. I hope I've got a solution for that. I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it's gonna be pretty cool if it does. Hopefully you'll stick around to check it out. Dig job, DIY. get to work. I've answered most of these questions in previous videos, but our soil in this particular area is perfect for ponds and holding water. There are literally hundreds of ponds within a 10 mile radius of here that hold water with no liner whatsoever because of our heavy lake bed soils. That's right. Our area was a prehistoric lake called the Black Swamp, and that's why it's so flat and why being able to hold water just comes natural to this heavy sticky clay. My concrete will be up here. I wanted to make sure that this pond would never get runoff in it from the surrounding fields. Not just because of the residual chemicals, but also to help cut down on the amount of erosion, silt, and organic debris that may have come along with it. I raised the top elevation of our sidewalk to 12 inches above the highest point in the field for this very reason, which will make it slow to fill, but hopefully help keep it clean. The only runoff water that goes into the pond will be from the outside edge of the sidewalk and in. Our soil type also helps this situation, as well as the fact that I purposefully made a shelf for the rocks to rest upon around the perimeter. Now, there may be a few trickle down there for sure, but for the most part, this is a tried and proven method for top edging around a pond in our area. I built my brother's pond 13 years ago the exact same way, and his rocks are holding steady at the top, as are countless others done the exact same way around here. It's fine. The pea gravel in the beach will tend to work its way downhill over time, but once it's full, the hydrostatic pressure of the water will mitigate some of the effects of gravity. In other words, the water pushing down on the gravel makes it a bit harder to kick it all downhill. So the pier turned out really great. They used a cordless vibration tool on the deck that helped the concrete to look smooth on the outside when the forms were stripped, and that chamfer along the bottom edge turned out perfect from our little corner trim piece that we put in the form. The underside of the deck has a slight texture from the OSB form, which that isn't a big deal. And the big cylindrical columns, they've got spiral lines from the tubes, but they're smooth for the most part, and all of that's gonna be underwater anyway. So honestly, we are really tickled with how it turned out. What do you think? This is still yet to be determined. We obviously want clean water to swim in, so certainly we won't let it get stagnant and green. Traditionally, proper aeration and coloring dye will go a long way to keeping things fresh on top. You can combine that approach with other methods and keep it even cleaner. We're still working out the details with a professional on the filtration side of things, but rest assured, we don't want to start a mosquito farm here. Well, I'm hoping to draw upon my secret weapon for that. In the back of my mind, if I ever got a pond, I knew that there was a possibility that I had a trick to keep it full. It could be just a pipe dream, so to speak, because the source of this secret can be elusive, but, but I'm not afraid to back down from a challenge, and so I wanna give it a try. All right, so it's time to talk about this secret. The water table is very shallow here. The well for our house, which is inside of our block building, it's only 20 feet deep. Having a shallow aquifer can be good and bad, but for, for this case, I'm considering it's gonna be good because there's one special feature about this aquifer. I grew up in this area. Matter of fact, my parents just live across the field and I've known my entire life that there's free flowing artesian wells in the area. So what that means is, is if you drive a well into the ground, if you hit it in the right spot, it's a very narrow path, but if you hit it, then the water has enough pressure to just come right out of the pipe that you put in the ground. It's here in an empty lot, and they have a fountain that runs all the time. No pump, no nothing. It's just tapped into the to that free-flowing artesian aquifer. This is a this is a fountain that's very close by to where I live. My neighbor to the north of me has a fountain that runs 24 seven behind his barn. The other neighbor has a fountain that runs. And probably the most interesting thing that I remember from being a kid 
was that there was a spring-fed pond not more than three quarters of a mile from here, and that pond was always full, all season long. That's because it was tapped into the artesian aquifer, and it had a drain, and it just always stayed full. I've never done anything like this before. I've never seen anyone do it before other than on YouTube, so I have no idea if it's gonna work. This could be a complete swing and a miss. I could try to drive this pipe down in the ground, and nothing comes out. And if there was water at the bottom, I could pump it out and that's still what I might do. But I'm gonna hope that water comes out on its own. And if it does, well, you can probably guess what I'm gonna do with that water. So I'm gonna dig a four foot hole first to work from. And that way, if I do hit water, I can put a valve in down deep and shut the water off and keep it from freezing in the winter. That's the plan. Hit a lot of metal already. That's an axle from like a Model T or something. At least that's what I'm gonna say it is. <laughs> okay, I just dug a little start hole here and it's already, that's five foot of depth right there. This is not a tutorial. This is a uh, infotainment. Okay, this is my parts. Check out this drive point. Looks like it'll go in pretty good. It's got a stainless steel screen there. And the idea is, is you get this down into a, a sandy gravelly layer of high permeability that has water there and the water will flow into this and fill the tube. This has to be well drive pipe. It's specifically made for driving into the ground. And then you've got a drive cap, which lets you screw that on the top of the pipe and then hit it with a hammer. Those are drive couplers. You have to have specific drive couplers. And then I've got an inch and a quarter ball valve so that if I do happen to hit flowing water, I can shut it off and then I'll proceed. So what I do above ground or above that ball valve is gonna be determined by whether or not I hit free flowing water. So I saw a guy on YouTube do this and it looked relatively easy and lots of folks in the past have driven shallow wells. So I don't think it'll be that tough. If they could do it a hundred years ago, I ought to be able to do it now, right? Inspectors are here. Driving platform. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty cool. We got three supervisors now. This is a special um, pipe dope that's meant for like water pipes. So this is not toxic. They said try not to get it in the pipe. On a pipe if you can help it. Jerry's ready. Uh, You're ready, aren't I you? Am. Okay, here goes nothing. Right there. Oh, you got water ready. Yeah. Right about there. There it is. I'll be the first holder. <laughs> Don't fall in there. Yeah. You want Have any of you guys ever done this? Not until well, today. Not well, guys. Not until <laughs> today's a first. Today's a first? First one. Oh, man. All right, so the first attempt with the drive cap failed because the drive cap got ruined and the top of the pipe threads got ruined. So we made this, uh, I just made this up real quick. This is gonna slide in a coupler and push on top and we're gonna go to plan B. I'm gonna push with the backhoe and see if we can't snap a pipe off that way or something. Maybe I can just push on there a little bit. I don't like the way it's tweaking the loader. I'd rather do it in the middle. Okay, we got eight, eight feet of pipe there, plus another five is 13. All right, so the backhoe didn't work quite like I wanted it to. It pushed real easily for a foot or two, then it kind of quit and got rough, and I don't think I want to beat on it. So we're gonna try for plan C, which is this vibratory jackhammer thing. I gotta get my headphones for this baby. Which is? Plan D is the... Big 
It's not going at all? I just don't trust this. I don't want that to break the weld and pop you in the head. It's still moving, but the only thing I can get it to move with is a sledgehammer. So I'm gonna do like what I've seen done on a couple videos. They build an A-frame, which this is my A-frame. I don't need to build that. But I need a pulley, I need something heavy, and we'll try driving it like that. That's plan D. Is that where we're at, D? We're gonna run out of alphabet. <laughs> You want to use a clevis on there? Or what do you want to use on there? Like that? Yeah, you want me to come around there and pick it up? Sucker's heavy. I need help. Okay, I'll help you do it. Here, I'll, I'll, let me do it. Let me do it. Hit the pipe. Let me do it. I'm telling you, I don't trust that 3 8 bolt. We gotta get the. We gotta get the tractor forward. I think. There. Whoa. There we go. There. We're gonna try it with about a two foot stroke once, or maybe one foot. About right there. Let's try that first. We're ready. Yep. Let go. One, two, three. Didn't seem to move at all. I don't think it moved, did it? It bounced. Wait a minute. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let go. Well, up. up. Down. Ready? Ready. One, two, three. Two Ready? some more <laughs> turn the whole thing yeah did it yeah let's turn the one below it well, I thought I was riding there with a couple of <laughs> 30 I didn't mean to drag everybody into this like super labor intensive thing I thought it'd get easier by now We're I'm definitely using different muscles. Yep. I like it. Well, thanks for all the guidance and supervision here today. Oh, that's all right. I might have to develop a different strategy and see if 
I don't know. I got to think it out here. We, we could be on call again. If, you know, okay. Snag. Situation. Well, I need to figure out a way to pick that up and drop it so we can just sit here and watch it eat. We didn't hit an artesian spring with free flowing water. We're down about 20 feet and I could get a little more footage. We'll see. I'll think it out. All right. All right, we're gonna try plan E. I think we're up to, D we did A, B, C, D, now this is E. Okay, I gotta get that bucket tight. That was easy for me. How is it for you? Oh, they're doing good. And so it's if better? One, if we had one more person to just help anchor. Driving got a little tough before we got to the end of our pipe, and we've tried multiple different versions, some of which I recorded and some of which I didn't. We even had a bigger jackhammer here that we tried. I never even filmed it, but it didn't work very well. Now we're on to probably what is the best system. We're using the excavator to lift it up and down. I've got the rope configured so that it holds it tight and I just let go, and we're cycling. Right now we're doing a foot in 10 minutes, so we'll just keep cycling like this. It's been an experiment and a learning experience, Again, this is not a tutorial. Infotainment. I was thinking it was like 21 and 3 quarter. Alright. It's went more than that though. There was more than that left on there. Swing! Well, I knew this could be a swing and a miss, and it was. You know, the good news is we figured out a way to drive the well down, and it worked pretty good. We got a pretty good distance, but the problem is, we hit a rock or something. So I was working with a uh, subscriber, a viewer that has uh, reached out to me that used to do well work. And Steve has been a big help. He said that moving any distance could be helpful. So the next pitch is gonna be to see whether or not I can get that thing out of the ground. And then if I can do that, I'll decide on what to do next. But for now, we're stuck. We don't have any water and we can't go any farther down. So the only option is to bring it out and then we decide what to do next. I didn't think it was gonna go up first, but once it started, obviously it's pulled up. But that's probably 300 bucks worth of material in the ground, so. We'll see if it comes apart and if I can salvage it. It's broken right there. That's the only place where water is coming out of it too. So she might be packed full of mud or wasn't hitting something super hard, but. 
certainly stopped, wasn't it? Yeah. It... I mean, we just hit not. We just hit a dead end. It was, it was moving good. We were moving a foot per 10 minutes, and then just nothing. Well, this video is true to life because not every story ends in a happy ending. We took a stab at it, and. I whiffed. This could be a big swing and a miss too. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of folks watching this that can, that were cringing and could tell me what I was doing wrong or what to try differently next time. But, you know, I'm the type of guy that likes to learn by doing. And, uh, well, I've learned a little bit here. I know what to do differently the next time. And I'm hoping there is a next time. I got to get a new well point because that one's damaged. It's, it's crunched from, I think, bottoming out against something hard and then we smashed it a little bit. But other than that, we got a better system for driving it, so I think there could be another time. If I'm lucky, you'll be back to check it out. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. See you after you get Are you a believer now? Did you get it? Water. <laughs> Can't beat the witch. <laughs> Douse. It's a dousing rod, not a witching. Some people believe in it, some people don't. Comment down below what you think. I know what I think. What does Ella think? What's Ella think? <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Cause it stopped. Oh man. This is very humbling and I can't believe it got there so quick. It, I'm just, I'm beside myself. Thank you so much for those of you that have watched from the very beginning and those of you who joined us here lately. It's just, it's incredible. Thank you very much, honestly.